Hello, everybody. My name is uh, Egame69. I made the task for this game. I am joined by one of the RTA runners, uh, Nomix, who is going to introduce the game real quick. Hello, everyone. Um, again, my name is Nomix, and I'm uh, really excited to um, share this run with uh, Easy Games and everyone here. Um, one of the great things with this task is uh, if you compare it to the last task, I would say a lot of the highlights that was uh, brought into the RTA runs was the task jumps, which is a frame perfect jump that allowed Buster to jump infinitely and very quickly. And uh, I would say for this run, uh, it's a lot of uh, great things in the community also got poured into it. And uh, Easy Games also helped us um, dissect and uh, explore new opportunities for the game, uh, specifically the speed walk, which uh, I'll let him talk about right now. All right. So um, in this game, there is a dash mechanic. Um, and there's a certain amount of dash that you can do at a, at a time, and that's represented by a bar that's on the top left of the screen. Obviously, for speed runs, you would want to use that as much as possible, and you want to make sure you can use it in areas that you can max it out. But um, there was a glitch that was found earlier this year where you can actually get the speed that you normally would from a dash by just walking. So the idea is that you would interrupt a um, a dash with a one frame slide on the ground. And what that does is it interrupts the transition from walking speed to dash speed, and you end up having dash speed while you're walking. Um, and that can make a lot of areas a lot faster um, due to this. And we, it actually re removes the uh, time, uh, the, the wait time to getting full dash speed right away. So. Um, yeah, I guess we can get started now. Sounds good. Uh, three, two, one, go. So obviously, with every single uh, task, we are starting from power on. Uh, we are going to set the game to hard mode, which is going to uh, give Buster one hit of damage and make a few boss fights slightly faster. Or uh, sli uh, uh, slightly longer, I should say. So the first level here is going to be the school, and we'll see the instance of fast walking right away. Yeah, and I would say the first stage is really kind of a tutorial stage. You're learning the mechanics. And as you see there, the dash meter is going down. And in this first section, or this next section, it's kind of the intended, you see Buster dashing, he's running up walls, and um, that's the intended way. But as you can see, uh, which will be sprinkled all throughout this run, is gonna be a mixture of that speed walking as well as a dash, or the test jumps right here, which we've dubbed uh, bunny hopping at this point. Yeah, and it should be noted that every single one of those bunny hops is frame perfect, and Especially if you're doing this for RTA runs, it's really difficult to do that consistently. But Nomics here is probably really good at um, doing that consistently in RTA runs, which is why um, the world record run and the second place run have such different times. <laughs> right. I think me and the second place are the only current runners that have the task jumps included. But mm -hmm. um, the upcoming boss fight is uh, Dizzy Devil. You basically have to feed him enough to put him into a coma. And uh, really kind of a tight fight. Like you, if you miss one of the, the timing on feeding him properly, he'll do an extra spin, at least one extra spin. And so um, in, in hard mode, I believe it's, do you remember how many uh, specifically, like how many more pieces of food you have to feed him? So well, I know that for every cycle, you have to th feed him uh, three pieces of food. Um, I think it's like two to one or something for normal mode. You would know better than I do. It's two, three, one, I think. Okay. We noted that um, hard mode is only available on the United States version of this game. The Japanese version only has easy and uh, and normal mode. And so right here we have um, one of one of the first few mini games in the game. Uh, so we're gonna get this wheel that will spin around. We want to get the Hampton mini game because it's the fastest one that we can exit out of. Um, yeah. Whenever whenever these happen, uh, we might be able to have a time for one donation. Actually, we'll probably read one right now if you want. 
Sure. We have a $87 donation from Leon and Earl that says, thanks to, thank you to everyone who has made this event possible. Nice. Thank you very much. So now we're at the uh, Wild West stage. Uh, we're going to use the fast walking right here to get past some uh, enemies. And upcoming here is going to be a jump rope section. Um, the game does not register if whether or not you jump over the rope, just if you land on the ground. So we can do a quick uh, hop right there by spamming the uh, jump button and the attack button, which will make Buster do what you saw. All right, and this is one of the more tight, I would say, platforming sections. But with uh, bunny hopping, Buster just basically flies up the staircase. Yeah. And so if, now, if you played this game as a kid, you probably never got past this stage, which is the, a very long auto scroller. Um, although, because we have such uh, tricks such as the uh, bunny hopping and <laughs> and that, uh, I, I just try to have as much fun as I can and make it entertaining, so it doesn't feel like it's as much of a drag. You have to take a moment of silence to enjoy all of the the glory of the sound effects. Mm -hmm. But yeah, coming up is a section where you typically die in a normal run, where um, <clears throat> it's an automated dash jumping sequence where um, Buster runs, he jumps over these big canyons, he grabs these little statues, which extends and replenishes his dash meter. Um, and we're actually going to be, um, I don't know what I want to say, like glitching out one of the upcoming sections to uh, save a lot of time, which we'll be talking about uh, briefly. And yeah. that was found within the last year between, I believe it was Akatiru and Easy Games, and a lot of really great experimentation that eventually got us to save, I want to say like, I want to say 15 seconds, but I feel like it's more, it feels like a bunch of seconds, but it's a lot of time when you think about a regular RTA run being or on average a little in the 20 minutes range. Yeah, so just to explain what's going to happen, um, once we get up to the next running section, we're going to be jumping over it up as high as we can. Um, the way that this game works with the scrolling sections is that um, if you pass a certain point in the level um, during the running sections, it sets a flag that lets uh, the game know where Buster is. Um, once he passes that flag, uh, it's telling the game to go back to normal sliding speed, but if we jump over it, uh, we can get the game to keep going fast, like you see right now, and that glitchiness just happens. Um, unfortunately, we can't take it through the entire stage because um, what ends up happening is the floor will become a death zone if you uh, stand still, and it's really impossible to keep you going uh, farther than you see it right now. I also just love how Buster's face is just the same smile as he's running through all the chaos of all the sprites passing through him. <laughs> yeah. uh, coming up, we have a little mini boss. Um, not too big of a deal, but he is kind of annoying. If you hit him in like in front of him, he'll knock off the screen, and then you lose a lot of time if you don't um, hit him properly. So you just have to hit behind him, and then he'll be more accessible. Yeah. Um, so if you notice the background, uh, this, is a, this is a side effect from doing the glitch that you saw earlier. Um, it doesn't set the uh, background to be correct, so it's it, it's going to be like this for the rest of the stage, but it will reset by the time we get to the next stage. And so right here, for whatever reason, if you crouch while on these logs, it will make the scrolling go by slightly faster. Uh, we have no idea why it does this, but we don't complain because we, we like speed. <laughs> What's also interesting is, uh, so coming up, we have a little bit of a cutscene where Buster jumps into space. Uh, in those times where we gl when we glitched to the bottom, if you actually task jump really high, you can start seeing scattered sprites all over the place, which incorporate these space sprites and all their Western sprites. And uh, haven't found anything out of it, but it definitely makes the game more busted. Yeah. We're just having a little fun here. We're gonna face with the wall. And oh no, we're gonna get squished by the uh, by the left side of the screen. Oh no, what's gonna happen? Oh no! Oh, there we are. <laughs> yeah. So with this uh, this train boss, he's just like it's an auto scrolling boss. The screen goes left to right, right to left. And what's really interesting is that um, uh, it's the only zip that we can actually find in the game. But it doesn't actually save any time or frames or anything. It's just you zip to one side of the screen and zip back and you can do it as many times as you want as, 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 as long as the screen is shifting towards you and you're just basically squishing yourself between uh, some uh, hard object sprite and it'll just zip you to the other side of it. 
Yeah. I should also note that um, in these auto-scrolling stages, there's actually two death zones. Normally there would be one, which is just the bottom part of the screen, but there's actually another death zone on the left side of the screen or whichever screen um, is not, th that the screen's not going towards. Um, so even if you weren't being pushed by anything, if you just walk to the uh, left side of the screen, you'll actually hit the death zone and die immediately. So that's one other reason why uh, this auto-scrolling stage might be a bit difficult for players to do. Everyone enjoyed that synchronizing with the wheel. <laughs> that's one of my favorite things of this stage in particular. We're gonna we're gonna save a, a, a little bit of frames by jumping near uh, Montana Max at the very edge, just so we can get closer to the uh, cart on the very bottom. Yeah, you can actually, with each of the bosses, um, there's always a little like sub-character that's going to be, uh, has some sort of dialogue before they turn this into the next uh, scene, which is usually a boss. In this case, it'll be the end of the stage. But usually if you, um, well, if you can, like, skid past them, like, basically dashing towards them and cancel your dash and it'll skid past the little trigger, you can get closer to the, um, the character, which uh, will save a few frames as you transition to the next screen. So we got our another, the next minigame, which, which we'll probably have time for one donation. Alrighty, we do have one more donation from the Axeman for $25. No comment, but thank you very much for the donation. And with that being said, guys, it is my time to head on out. So I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Freya Spirit for your hosting, and I'll see you guys soon. Oh, we are Freya's, and we are glad to be here. And we are definitely hyped for the rest of this event, so... One other thing uh, that makes doing the same minigame fast is that you don't have the uh, introduction at the very beginning every single time, so that saves a little bit of time. So now we're at the haunted house, and we're going to go through it as any cartoon like Buster would. Just complete chaos. Yeah, the haunted house stage is one of the more uh, in-depth like, platforming stages. Uh, in RTA Run, it's really... Um, you get most of the dynamic movement, and you also have one section coming up where we have our first clip here. We can clip right over the wall and go to the next section. And then coming up, a lot of really tight movement here. All these little hammer things, so these little pendulums are all on a timer. And so uh, with task jumping though, you can, or bunny hopping, you basically, you can barely even see a lot of the stage because uh, these games is already basically, you only see like a few frames in front of you, so, or a few surprises in front of you. Yeah, right now, Buster is actually trying to talk to Babs, but um, because she's off screen, you can't see her. So, <laughs> yeah, there she is. Going too All right, fast. So, so for this boss, um, he's going to be throwing uh, one of two objects, uh, either a light bulb or a nut. And we want him to throw a nut every single time because we can uh, bounce off of those back into the machine that you see in the back. Um, the way that we can manipulate him to uh, drop a nut every single time is by ducking um, on certain frames, which will advance the RNG into our favor. Yeah, and normally the monster only throws three objects, but if you hit him right after he throws his third object, then you're able to get another set of them, so you get the maximum amount of damage on the machine. Mm-hmm. That's that stage. Uh, I guess we have another time for, or we have enough time for one more donation. There are no donations right now, but we do have a blurb. All donations from this event will go to NAMI, and NAMI envisions a world where all people affected by mental illness live healthy, fulfilling lives, supported by a community that cares. They provide advocacy, education, support, and public awareness so that all individuals and families affected by mental illness can build better lives. Awesome. Great cause. All right, so now we have football and uh, the Luniversity, whatever team name they have, <laughs> are is down by a touchdown and they need to score a touchdown in this kickoff to uh, win the game. So we're going to get a touchdown. Although we are not going to get a, a kickoff return for a touchdown. Instead, we are going to take uh, a hit at the very end and just get a touchdown from five yard line or whatever. Um, the reason why we do this is because there is a bonus uh, star collection that you can get after scoring a touchdown. Um, depending on how far you return it for, you get more stars. Um, 
if you do a kickoff return, which the game does not expect you to do, um, you'll end up counting stars um, in hex decimals or, or in, in hex numbers, so it would go by really slowly. But if we take a hit at the very end, we can just get uh, 10 stars, which is the minimum. And right, so uh, if we have an... <clears throat> go ahead. I was just going to say, uh, in the next... Um, so we, uh, we briefly talked about the um, minigame in general, but like if you actually miss this three-frame window for Hampton, which has really little like visual audio cue, you're basically either going to land on Plucky, typically, or Sweetie Bird, which essentially will add like at least like a minute to your run, because Pluck, Pluck is going to do a bingo game, Sweetie Bird is doing this weighing game, but all the other minigames besides Hampton and Babs actually saves time in a speedrun perspective. And so um, you could definitely lose a lot of time. Yeah, and I, Plucky's the worst one, isn't it? I think uh, Furball is probably the one. Right, and right. so Buster just like flew off the screen, and uh, th this was uh, one of the biggest things in the last task, which um, is carried through here, which is uh, the bunny hopping all the way straight through these big balloon sections. The first selection, or first section, had the switch that you're supposed to hit. You get on a basically a cutscene where you're on this balloon, it takes you all the way up, but you can just basically bunny hop straight to the trigger, go to the next section, and then uh, bunny hop straight to the top. And so. Um, I'll say from an RTA perspective, like that's the one thing that separates a lot of the runners at this point, is whether or not they can do these frame perfect jumps perfectly all the way straight through. Because, I mean, one, it's hard to do just execution wise, but it's also just uh, <laughs> very painful on the hands. And so, um, TAS uh, smooths it out so much more that you get the full height of those jumps, the full you know timing of those jumps. And uh, not to mention that the bunny house will actually save you in this case of this is the sleeper stage that if you hit a if you kick flip a bird and fall off the uh, hot air balloon, you can at least save yourself now with those uh, bunny hops. So there's a lot of um, speed te uh, uh, definitely help from a uh, speed perspective as well as just like a general survival technique. Yeah. So coming up, we're going to get to a I don't know if you can call it a boss, but just just the area. Um, where we have like pinball paddles and we want to get all these balls to um, open up the top door. We have to run up the wall a little bit to get the door on screen, otherwise it will not open for whatever reason. So, that, so that's why it looks a bit awkward and so just, because like you could just say like, oh, I could jump down to the uh, paddle and just get up that way, but it, the, the door needs to be on screen for it to open. I would so say, now, okay, sorry, go ahead. Uh, I was just say the, the movement uh, that you did on the the pinball section is so much harder to do in person to try to do that in any efficient way. I would say that's going to be one of the harder things to ever try to replicate. Mm -hmm. Especially in RTA where you have, those are all frame perfect inputs. <laughs> right. All right, so we're coming up to the last mini game section. Uh, probably have. Time for another donation. Still no donations, but we can read another blurb. This is Task Giving 2020 Task Spots' very first charity marathon, and all donations are going to NAMI, National Alliance of Mental Illness, so definitely get your donations in. All right, so I can give a maybe a short introduction to the next stage. So the space stage is. Um, I think when we first saw the speed walk, this is the first spot that we thought about when we thought about um, how much time we could actually save from the run itself. Um, and so at the very beginning, uh, the task jumps are used to basically skip a large portion of the platform that you would normally go left to right and all the way up to those ladders. And then at this point, you unlock the ship. And at this point, you would have a full dash meter. You would dash all the way across the ship. And usually you would run out of dash meter about this point. And so at this point, your dash meter is uh, depleted and you have to kickflip really fastly, fast across this section. But because you have that speed walk, you can go full speed ahead and save a generous uh, couple seconds there. So that's going to be, uh, once we start incorporating this into the RTA runs, I believe that's going to be probably the, one of the bigger chunks of time saves. Yeah. So now we are trying to dodge a bunch of missiles being fired at us from, I believe, uh, some sort of Star Wars uh, like character. Um, we can avoid the, that damage by getting behind these uh, these walls right here. 
Um, we duck a little bit while the explosion's happening because that reduces lag by like one or two frames. Doesn't save too much time, but gotta save all those frames. <laughs> you want to talk about the up upcoming room? Sure. Uh, so the upcoming room has a little bit of a, I guess you could say a puzzle, where you just hit a switch, the ball, uh, the gravity changes, and the ball hits, goes up, and then you hit the switch again, and it goes back down. You're supposed to do this ball four or five times, but one thing I was experimenting with earlier this year is being able to clip through that section, and so the floor, instead of having to break it, um, <clears throat> it's not completely solid, and so um, uh, basically you can just dash through it and at a very precise frame perfect jump you're able to uh, bypass that floor altogether and so I think I'll just call it the floor skip but that saves also a big chunk of time as well mm -hmm. now here um, there's two routes that you can go to get to the end here um, we're taking the one on the bottom because we can get into this little trampoline thing that'll push us very fast and then we are just gonna climb up the wall right here or bunny hop up the wall <laughs> and now we're at the final boss, which is, uh, Duck Vader. Can you remember, is that, like, his actual name, or is that something that we just kept calling him? I'm pretty sure that's his actual name, but I, I'd have to look. <laughs> anyway, so he's gonna have a giant laser that'll try to shoot us, and, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna knock him off the laser, and we are going to hit the laser to, uh, face him, and do damage every single time. While Duck Vader is off the laser, he will try to go towards the end of the laser on the like the opposite side. Um, so I can use that information to um, manipulate him to go in the farthest distance on the ground so we can uh, get him to take damage from the laser just every single time. And that's the run. Also very hard to do <laughs> in RTA's perspective. I think um, that's going to be one of the biggest, like, trying to manip Duck Vader is always really stressful because it's the very last thing of the run. And um, yeah, I guess uh, as we conclude this run, just want to give a, a huge shout out to uh, specifically, uh, you know, Easy Games for putting all this hard work into this uh, amazing task. The first one already uh, helped the run all together in the community. This next one has already, like, I would say it's a culmination of a lot of the things the community has already started to put together. So a lot of things you just saw compared to the last task and even any of our RTA runs is a lot of uh, experimentation and our exploration and curiosity that um, Easy Games was putting in and Akuturu, myself, Billy Volpe was also in there and some others. Uh, also Usu, who's a Japanese runner. We were all like just diving into this game uh, in I'll say 2020, 2019? It's the last year, and so um, definitely um, appreciate all of Easy Games um, efforts and all this, and also definitely shout outs to the uh, Buster Bus Loose uh, Discord community that we have. If you are interested in the speedrun itself or um, want to speedrun with us, uh, we do have a small little Discord, so definitely let uh, myself or Easy Games 69 know, and we can uh, send you an invite. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh task giving for having me i'm glad i could show off this game which is really fun it's probably one of my favorite tasks i've ever worked on gg and thank you so much for that commentary very very fun run so we have a five dollar donation from Taskbot, which says i have been asked to play super mario brothers 3 with lord tom you guys made this possible let us celebrate by supporting nami thank you for your donation Taskbot.